Back with Coach Jason Simpson, UT Martin set to uh, take on Eastern Illinois this upcoming Saturday, coming off the loss at South Alabama. Coach, let's first talk about the first half. Uh, the score was 16-7 at the half. Uh, first of all, I was impressed with them defensively. They hit us as hard as we've been yeah. hit all season. Yeah, they certainly did. They, uh, for a team that then I, I bet you, Chris, you go back and look, and 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 we, <laughs> there's been several times this year we've got 50 plays by halftime. Well, we had 17 at halftime this year. I mean, this week, you know, so a lot and, of and the time of possession was ridiculously oh, yeah. lopsided. They had the ball for 11 minutes in the second half, in yeah. the second quarter. Yeah. Okay, we had it for five minutes in the first, three minutes in the second. So, wow. uh, you know, now you say, well, your defense didn't get off the field. Yes, that's true. But also, we had opportunities to, we're going three and out as, as well. Right. Our and in, in our system, when you go three and out, it can take a minute and ten seconds. <laughs> exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we're going fast. And yeah. that's the downfalls of going going fast. Even though we're not a spread out go fast team, mm -hmm. regardless, the clock ticks, you know, the clock ticks the same. But like I tell our defense, I tell our offense, if you want to get off the field, stop them. You want to stay on the field, get a first down, you know, no matter what, what we're doing. But, uh, you know, they didn't blitz, and they were able to sit there and, and base defense and play their base defense, and uh, we didn't stay on blocks. We didn't maintain blocks. Um, you know, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of misassignments. Um, they, just, they just beat us at the point of attack. So, and then you, put, then you go back in the second half, and we'll talk about the, the interception and the, and mm -hmm. the fumble. Uh, when the defense did start playing better and getting some stops, you know, then you give them a short field, and then, you know, the units were not playing together. So, yeah, that was the bottom line in the first half offensively that they were, um, you know, they'd stop us on first down. We go to play action, go incomplete. Now you're at third and long, and you're not converted. So, uh, you know, is there some better play calls that I can make? Sure, but there's also got to be – you've got to be able to get four and five yards on some base calls. And you, and we're two of 11 in the game on third down conversions. Yeah. And that's because most of it's third and long. Yeah, no question about it. And and you probably converted one of those or one or even both of them probably in the uh, the fourth quarter there when we're just yeah. scrambling around. So, yeah, uh, yeah they, they played good defense. They were getting up 317 a game. We ended up with 325, so that's about what they've been giving up. Coach, the one touchdown was a play you pulled out of your back pocket there on the uh, on the Stephen Shiver pass to Quentin. Smith. Yeah, you know, somebody asked me today in the press conference. They said, you know, were they that good on defense that you just, you know that you had to go to trick plays to score? I said, well, uh, no, not necessarily. That's a play that we practiced that Shiver's thrown for since he was in high school. He can throw the ball really well, and and we knew we were getting some cover two looks, which is conducive to that little uh, that little gimmick play. And so we didn't do it to perfection. Derek kind of made a bad throw. And so it was high? High went behind him, so uh -huh. Shire had to catch it, wheel around, uh -huh. and you're fake blocking on the corner, then you release him and run past him. And so when he did that, Shiver didn't couldn't get the ball off as quick as he normally would, and he took it right in the face. He had there was pressure. Oh, pressure not the word. <laughs> he got smacked. He actually was falling to the ground as he released as the he ball. As he releases the okay. ball, but the safety yeah. had come down and bit on the fake so hard uh -huh. that there's nobody within 30 yards of Quentin. So all we had to do was keep the ball in bounds. And Quentin called in on the end zone. He gives us a lead seven to six. And uh, you know sometimes you need little good things to happen on the road to stay in the game. It was a South Alabama third quarter as they. Come back and score 17 points and to me the third quarter was the difference in the game well no question and uh you know that was um we get a uh the first one was interception uh -huh. and uh and it's kind of <laughs> Uh, you know, it wasn't a bad decision by Derek. The ball got was that tipped. The, what, double tipped, wasn't it? Yeah, it was double tipped. Actually, you're right. The and 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 the combination of things are is that the back. You know, when you're running through zones, uh, Derek read it right. He he was going to the correct guy on the, on the on the route on the throw, but the the back didn't get the cleanest release out of the backfield when his backer didn't come as you would like. So therefore, the linebacker was able to, to get more depth. Okay, so Derek couldn't get the ball over the top of the linebacker. He tips it, gets tipped to the safety. Well, um, Quentin number receiver who's going to make the play knocks it out of the safety's hands but then it gets tipped into the corner's hands and so you know one of the one of those things to where you say well it counts as an interception but did you make a bad decision no you didn't but you got to throw the ball over the top of the linebackers or get to the next receiver yeah. in the progression so that was disappointing and then uh very disappointed on the fumble i mean we've you know tevin's got to take care of the football he's had some problems in practice the last couple of weeks of putting the ball on the ground he's got himself in a bad habit of the ball working away from his body when he goes to, to make a move, when he goes to, to make a cut, the ball's coming away from his body as he's trying to get his eyes on the next defender. And when he did that, another guy came in and hit him and stripped it, and uh, they recovered and we gave him a short field, and uh, I guess one play later they get the touchdown. Now, uh, this pretty obvious question, I think, but from a coach's standpoint, you'll probably give us a different answer. But what are the difference between the guys who never fumble the football and the guys who do? Uh, a guy like Donald Chapman, the ball just always stayed 
uh, next to their body. Okay. The so ball just, just. And yeah. then you have to be strong. No, you have to have strong hands. You have to, have, you know, I think there, there's two things. Just like you said, one, you, uh, well, I think there's three things. One is proper technique. The ball against the rib cage. You cover the tip of the nose of the ball up, up against your uh, bicep, uh, up against the rib cage. Uh, you know, so all, you know, the f points of the football are covered. In traffic, you've got to put the other hand over it. Okay, so when guys get there to make a tackle on, you can't run with two hands over the ball. But when you get ready to get to a collision point, you need to cover, you know, cover the ball up. You need to be strong. You have to have strong forearms, strong, you know, strong uh, hands because there's a lot of time helmets are hitting on the top of your hand as people try to knock, knock the ball loose. But it also has to has to be a conscious conscious ever effort during the week to where it becomes muscle memory mm -hmm. and then on Saturday it continues over you can't right. just you don't have time to think about you it you can't you can't so uh, those are things I have to continue to work on and, and it's amazing to me some of the little guys never fumble the football you know and we've knock on wood we've you know we've taken care of the football from a running back standpoint for the last two years but the guy that's fumbled has been Tevin over the last two years and uh you know and and he's every time he has a good game and the in his first and second year here he you know he would fumble and kind of get in my doghouse and another guy would get the carry so um, you know we've talked about it today I, I, I think he's matured enough now he understands what we need from him and uh, hopefully he'll get it corrected 33 13 was the score at one point and uh, coach you just you didn't give up let's, well let's talk I mean, about the fourth quarter what was the yeah difference? I mean <laughs> It's and I don't mean this critical of our football team. There's two things. I'm very proud of our football team that uh, you know we 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 competed. We competed. I heard a lot of positive things, um, you know, on the sideline. Of a lot of guys, you know, still believing. And you know, even though if if you did come back and tie it up, and believe me, I would have taken that. It was going to be an ugly, you know, an ugly overtime. But that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes on the road, we need to win a game where it's ugly, to where maybe you don't always play the best, but you, but you, you know, get get the win. Uh, schematically, it was just kind of, you know, it just, you know, your hair was on fire. We were just running around. Derek and, and Shiver and Quentin were kind of making a few plays. And, and that's okay. Sometimes you need to be able to do that to show that you do have some playmakers and everything doesn't have to be scripted out just the way that you practice it every day in practice. So that's the negative part about it, that that was, that that was just kind of, uh, um, you know, guys just making plays. And that's not that's kind of not our personality to be all spread out like that and mm -hmm. throwing it every down. That's not how we're built right now, especially with our young tackles. But, like I said, on the positive side, I was very – I saw defensive guys come to the offensive huddle during some of those time, timeouts, you know, even though we had to get the onside kick. Uh, you know, encouraging guys. Um, I saw guys with beliefs in their eyes that, hey, if we get this onside kick, we're going to win this football game. I saw guys even after the football game with remorse on their face of if we would play better early, you know, may, this team probably wasn't as good as what I thought they were, and we could have won this game. And as a coach, you know, you, you, you know, you, the loss still stings, but uh, you've got to grow each week. And I thought the last 10 minutes of that football game, uh, we, we, we grew a little bit. I agree. And watching it from the press box and watching others in the press box, of course, we're looking at the stats. And, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of thought at some point it's just going to start to unravel because it was mm -hmm. not going our way in the yeah. third quarter. But your team made a believer out of me. And then you, <laughs> you go from thinking, uh-oh, we're in trouble. What's right. this final score going to be? To going, this could be the most unlikely win I've ever seen in my no. entire life if we come back and win this. Not the greatest comeback, but maybe the most unlikely win that I didn't expect to happen. Well, you know, their, their offense is not built uh, you know, to score a lot of points. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to get four yards and move the chains and stay. And, you know, I had said if we can make them go – you know, if we can make them go 80 yards four times, they can't, they're not built to do that because all those four-yard runs, you just things happen. You get you drop a pass, and then they're they're all out of uh, sync. Mm -hmm. uh, and we made them do that in the second half. You know, a little bit, you know, too little, too late. Uh, and they're not built to score 40 points or 50 points. So the more we kept our offense out of the field and scoring, the better ch chance we had, to obviously, to uh, to get back in the game. So, like I said, I think some lessons were learned. Uh, a lot of mistakes were made. Uh, but I like the fight in our in our football team, and uh, we'll certainly name it this week. Talk about one of the last plays where, where you were trying to get the onside kick. Uh, oh, I thought we had I it. I thought we had it, too. You go back and watch yeah. the film, and, and do you see anything You couldn't tell. Just we watched yeah. this today as a team, and, you know, the point we made was – we had three guys on the pile, and they had one. And then some other guys jumped in, and we've got to come up with that football. I, I'm, not, I'm not still real sure who came up with it, uh, but the official said that they had it. But we've got to, you know, there's no cameras underneath that underneath that pile, you know. And uh, you know, you'll never, you won't see any personal fouls calls or, or <laughs> anything like that. And we don't want to be a dirty team. But when you're underneath that pile, you've got to come up with that football, and uh, we didn't do it. 
Uh, I know you probably don't want to play the what if game, but mm -hmm. if we do get the ball, right, uh, what happens? Well, you figure this is probably about 17. I think there were 17 seconds we we're going to be left, and you're going to get the ball at uh, you know about the, the the minus 42 or so. All right, so you're you're even minus 45. So you've probably got um, you know you got one play to get it uh, to complete a pass to get it there to the minus to the plus 40. You know, to a 10 to 15 yard pass. Uh, then maybe there's six seconds left, and maybe you can throw a little out. Uh, to get it there to the uh, 35, and then you give Cody a long, long shot of the go. field goal. So okay. that's, that was what was in my head. Well, I knew you had it scripted. <laughs> I knew because I was thinking. Hey, what, 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 you no, know, you do. You start yeah. right down you plays. You have to. Yeah. You no, know, because you got no timeouts. You can't take a sack. You you got to throw the ball away. Uh, and 17 seconds gives you an opportunity for two plays, maybe with a second left on the clock to kick a field goal. Okay. Final score 33-30. We'll come back and look ahead to Eastern Illinois and at what happened in the OVC this past weekend with Coach Jason Simpson on the Skyhawk Sports Network.